Hello everybody, some kind of cyborg here, back with another Back for Blood video. Today I'm going to be giving some tips, some advice on just some things to consider and attempt to incorporate into your own play that I have found great success with. I'm going to do my best to get straight to the information, give you exactly what you came here to hear, and as tempting as it is to go into the various mechanics and systems that make this game unique and the standout within the horde shooter genre. I think this first point is absolutely a crucial consideration for any kind of cooperative team-based game. Always do your utmost to never be the player that has run off and died by themselves. This also works on the reverse side. If you're trailing too far behind the rest of the players, you have just as much potential to be caught out. However, your teammates may have less potential to resurrect you. There are points in missions where if you trail too far behind your teammates, they could cross impassable terrain that they simply can't make it back to you with. And then you're down, you're KO'd, you're pinned, you're trapped, you're whatever, you're dead. It is a very, very old adage for games of this particular genre. Always stick with the team. We are infinitely stronger together. We are force multipliers for one another when we stay together. When we are separated, that is exactly what the director and what the horde want us to do. The director will attempt to take advantage of these situations where we are in a one and three situation where one player has split from the pack and three are still grouped. In those situations, we will be split up by a pack of Ridden that have come from nowhere, a random horde trigger, or a special mutant that is specifically designed to capitalize on the weakness that comes inherently from being separated from the group. Always remember, we are much, much stronger, much more coordinated than the Ridden, and that is our advantage against them. Teamwork is the main advantage and what distinguishes the players from the Ridden here. Players who run off often will always die alone. Situational awareness. So as you navigate your way through a typical match, there's going to be a couple things you always want to keep your eyes on. And those are what I call hard triggers. So that's going to be snitches, birds, alarmed doors, anything that is going to have the horde absolutely descending ravenously on your position. Anytime we trigger a horde, that is a situation wherein we are expending ammo, we are expending health, we are then spending copper to resupply these resources. At the end of the day, that's going to stop us from being able to snowball our team by purchasing things that we actually want to get like offensive team upgrades, utility team upgrades, weapon attachments, various better weapons, uh, filling our various slots with bits of gear and tactical equipment. Any situation where we can simply be on the lookout and be aware and pick and choose the fights that we want to take rather than the ones that we trigger accidentally that is going to be a situation wherein we are maximizing our efficiency within the match. Situational awareness extends beyond these simple hard triggers though. By coordinating with our teammates positioning, we can create crossfires, we can maximize DPS on the horde while minimizing any kind of friendly fire HP losses. And though on beginner difficulty that is not a consideration, it is always something you should have in the back of your mind. Beginner difficulty can teach us a lot of bad habits. If we go into these even beginner matches and consider, oh, maybe I shouldn't be stood in front of Hoffman with an LMG here. 
oh, maybe I shouldn't be stood in front of Walker while I'm tanking like seven sniper rounds to the back of my head because I stepped in front of him. What we want to consider instead is whereabouts are our teammates in relation to us? Where can we crouch? Which corner can we hold? Which angle can we be setting up here to create a crossfire into the horde without getting shot ourselves? I have 100% lost more HP during my initial play on this game via friendly fire than I ever have through getting caught out by a horde or by any particular kind of special mutation. It's also essential to always be aware of when a special mutant is on the field. We can do this via the ping system. Anytime we see anything that looks like a true threat, spam ping it. Just go crazy. Absolutely mash that key. Let your teammates know that as they are facing down maybe a pack of 20 standard ridden coming towards them, it might be worth turning around and hitting that assassin that's on the flank, hitting that exploder or tall boy. When your teammates get pinned or restrained or otherwise incapacitated, they will have a yellow aura around them. In a fight, they should always be priority number one wherever available. Freeing a teammate and making sure that all your numbers are up at all possible times is perhaps the simplest and easiest way of maximizing your team effectiveness versus the horde. Kill. It's your lucky day, HR. Nothing to worry about. Copper is king. This ties into the last point and also goes to detail something of the new mechanics on show in Back for Blood here. Copper is a resource wherein we can upgrade our characters' equipment and loadouts within missions. By practicing situational awareness and avoiding situations where we're spending money on healing supplies and uh, wall cabinets and unnecessary pools of ammo, we can compound our strength via copper. We essentially turn the game into a win harder situation because we're not spending our money on bouncing back. We are spending it on ensuring that when we engage in that next fight, we are armed to the teeth. We are walking arsenals. We are walking pharmacies. We've got absolutely everything we need to ensure that we come out on top in any situation. It's much harder to do that when you've been put on the back foot and you're spending all your money, all your resources, just trying to catch up so you can play the game. A single pipe bomb for a 350 copper investment has the potential to mitigate a thousand plus copper in team-wide healing supplies, and that's admittedly in an ideal situation. However, even in a worst case scenario where the horde has been triggered accidentally, they're pressing us from every single side, that pipe bomb is still going to see a huge amount of value. It's going to pull Ridden off a special infected mutant. It's going to give us a precious few seconds to get some damage into a golem, perhaps. It's going to allow us to reposition through an otherwise unnavigatable situation to set up shop somewhere where we have a much better chance of funneling the horde into a devastating crossfire. For an even smaller investment than a pipe bomb, we can take firecrackers, which will do exactly the same thing. They'll give us time to reposition they can allow a clutch res or they can pull a horde away from a mutant that desperately needs to get dropped it's time to our first point again here any ammo not spent fighting a horde we didn't have to fight is money in the bank by minimizing our losses here we increase gains and that is just simple economics with our newfound wealth we can then invest enough into team upgrades and whichever other offensive or tactical equipments we desire to ensure that we essentially turn into unkillable, pill dispensing, stock to the teeth with equipment juggernauts. So this is going to be detailing some of the new unique mechanics to Back for Blood right now, and some that I personally absolutely love about the game, and is one of the main reasons I've become so invested in it. That is the uh, the deck and card mechanics. So, the draws from your deck aren't random. The first card in your deck will always be played first. That is known as your starter card. As we are building our decks, considerations must be made for the kind of character we're playing, the corruption cards available, and 
what we're going to be facing in that mission. Deck building is a skill which improves and will become more refined with experience in playing the game. There are certain missions, for example, where you may be sprinting equipment to objectives or holding off the horde at a point for a certain amount of time. By recognizing those key points within missions, we will be able to better curate a deck and stack it so that we pull cards exactly when we need to for those particular missions. We essentially maximize our effectiveness then at every stage of play. When it comes to the director and their corruption deck, we can also consider how our active cards that we currently have available can counter whatever the director is trying to throw at us. Increased ADS speed is nice, for example, but if we're facing enemy ridden with increased HP and the ferocity corruption card thrown on them, it might be worth picking up better weak point damage instead. Active cards and our deck are our ace in the hole as players to constantly attempt to shift the scales in our favor. If you've at all enjoyed the video or found it useful, please do consider leaving a like. If you have any criticisms, please leave a comment. Until the next time folks, take care and have a good one.